Alberta, what is going on? Premier Allison Redford is spending like there's no tomorrow. And so what should be Canada's most prosperous and successful province? Should they be staring at a $3 billion deficit? Government spending at a record $43 billion bucks as oil revenues slide. Terrific long-term thinking from Redford's Red Tories. Now one of Redford the Red's top Red Tories is hinting at tax hikes. Lee Richardson, Redford's principal secretary, says the Alberta government has to look at a different balance of revenues and expenditures. Asked whether the government is looking at tax measures, the former Conservative member of Parliament said everything, including tax increases, on the table. Richardson blames volatile resource revenues for this potential so-called solution, but it seems potential tax hikes loomed regardless. Here's what Finance Minister Ron Liepert said in his February 2012 budget speech. Budget 2012 makes no change to Alberta's tax structure or rates, but as we move away from volatile resource revenues to fund ongoing programs and move toward a more sustainable revenue base, we know that a discussion on taxes must lie in Alberta's future. Alberta becoming a bloated big government bureaucracy with taxpayers expected to bear the burden. For more on these potential tax hikes and the ongoing probe into Alison Redford's ethics, we turn to Edmonton Sun's Lauren Gunter. Lauren, am I getting uh, the correct impression that they feel that the enormous resource revenues and the enormous re resource revenue potentials are not good enough, that they've got to create a model uh, so that they're like those provinces that don't have those resources, that don't have the oil and the gas? I think that's a pretty good summation. The, uh, the point here is that uh, they don't have a revenue problem, though. They do have revenue volatility. About a quarter of their revenues are from non-renewable natural resources. And as you correctly said, the prices fluctuate a lot. They go up and down by 25, 30, 40 percent sometimes. And so it's, it's hard to plan for all the spending they have with that kind of volatility. But that's the, the problem is they're spending, not the volatility. They spend more per capita than any level of government in, uh, in Canada, at far more than the Fed. They spend almost uh, $12,000 per man, woman, and child uh, in Alberta on, uh, on all sorts of programs. But much of it goes to very high, high wages for public sector workers. And the, the, the Redford government has painted itself in a, in a corner. It won the, the election in April of 2012 by appealing to uh, non-traditional Tories, by appealing to people who don't normally vote for them, teachers, public sector workers, people who love expensive government programs. And they said, this is not your father's PC party. Uh, and they meant it. So, you know, they promised tax breaks specifically for teachers. Like, just, you know, if you're a teacher, you're going to get a, a $500 tax credit just for being a teacher. They promised all sorts of new family health clinics. They talked about new seniors programs. I mean, they, they sounded for all the world like uh, the Ontario Liberals or like the NDP in just about every other province. They're big, big, big spenders. And having cobble together a coalition of voters who are in favor of high wages for public sector workers and big expensive government programs, they now, now find themselves in a position where they have to spend this, or they think they have to spend this money, and resource revenues are near, nowhere near where they projected them to be. So, so, as I said, they've painted themselves in this corner. Lauren, uh, do you mind if I just challenge you a bit on this uh, business of resource uh, vulnerability and resource uh, volatility. I mean, we've got lots of farmers and ranchers in our audience right now, especially in Western Canada. The, the word hedging is not new to them, and it's certainly not new to you. It's not new to anyone in the, in the oil industry. It can't possibly be new to anybody I involved in uh, revenues in the Alberta government. Uh, don't they hedge like everyone else to try to deal with volatility? They're supposed to, and there is actually a law that goes back to Ralph Klein's first year as premier in 1993 that requires them to budget based on a five-year rolling average of uh, resource revenues. And they sort of fudge their way around this so that they then don't have to uh, use the, the, the most current five years. They, they don't use the volatility. It, the smart thing for them to do, and it would have always been the smart thing for them to do, is to spend the money that they have coming in that they can rely on. Uh, you know, they, they know they're, going, they're never going to go below about 75 or $80 a barrel for oil. So, sp sure, spend that money. 
But anything above and beyond that, take that as gravy, put it in a way, salt it away, put it in the bank, and, and save it for when we don't have resource income. But they spend every penny, and they expected, I'll give you a couple of examples, they expected oil to be at over $99 a barrel for the entire year. It's been at, on average this year at about $86 a barrel. And they expected business revenue, tax revenue from businesses to go up 11% this year and 17% next year. Nobody in their right mind thought that was going <laughs> no, to happen. No, there's, there's no private economist who's forecasting that. No. Uh, Lauren, we got about a minute here. Uh, drill down on the deepest of the conflict in the conflict of interest file on Redford. Well, you know, the, the thing is here, she probably is not guilty of a conflict of interest in awarding a contract for a huge tobacco lawsuit to her ex-husband's law firm when she was Minister of Justice. A, because probably the contract wasn't technically signed until after she stepped down as Justice Minister, and B, because at the time, ex-spouses were not covered by the conflict law in Alberta. But the problem is, this is about the sixth or seventh big conflict of interest scandal that she's had since she became Premier, and eventually, voters just don't care about the technicalities. They say it smells, the flies are starting to, to, to spool around these folks, and, uh, and it just looks really bad. What about uh, queuing up in uh, hospital lines? Is there any way she can come out of this squeaky clean? No, but, you know, that, that was a phony investigation from the beginning. They knew no one was going to say there had been any queue jumping. No one was going to admit they'd actually put VIPs to the head of the line. And uh, so th that was a diversion to get away from the fact that they'd actually threatened some doctors to take away their billing account numbers if uh, the doctors didn't stop complaining about the way uh, health care budgets were spent in this province. So th one was a smokescreen for the other. And people are just getting tired of the fact that she likes to win on these technical points. She thinks that it's very important that the Speaker found a way to, to absolve her of the charge of lying in the Assembly uh, on, on a technicality. But people don't care. That maybe makes sense to her as a lawyer who used to work for the UN where such you know, little, little details matter, but it doesn't matter to most voters. The lawyers tell me I'm out of time. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> very good. Lauren Gunter. <laughs>